uh, Crystal Gonzalez, and she comes from the Community College of Aurora, is currently enrolled at CU studying architectural engineering. Hi, thank you, Alicia, for that introduction. Well, um, hello. For the ones um, that doesn't know about what's a PICA, I would like to um, introduce you to it. <laughs> PICA, think about like a Pikachu with the little um, mouse and Mickey Mouse, and they're so cute and tiny, and you can see on the picture. And PICAs are mammals are really pretty sensitive to uh, high and low temperatures. And I don't know if you know, but PICAs could die after two hours of high exposure temperatures. Oh, they're really such a unique animals because they do not shed heat. So that means, so me and you, we go to the gym, we walk and we sweat to, the, um, to disperse the heat that our body contains. Pikas do not do that. And that's why they're not great with high temperatures. My name is Crystal and I'm an undergraduate student and intern at the University of Colorado at Boulder. I currently uh, work uh, in this summer on the Naya Wet Rich Long-Term Ecological Research Program where our research is focusing how the American pika behaves and adapt during the continuous climate changes. My project for these nine weeks is a study where we compare downscale temperature models with the temperature record obtained from sensors. And my big question was to find if the models represent the precise temperatures that pikas are experiencing in their territories. Next slide. Um, a little bit of background, as a climate change is getting worse and worse and worse, uh, many species um, are expected to shift their distributions. Research uh, uses models to infer how species will shift and assess whether they will lose their ecological services. And however, most of these models are used to predict the species distributions and they're based in, on environmental variables records at the large scales, which might not represent the environmental for these small animals that experience. Research need accurate um, temperatures to understand how the pika is responding to the climate change. Downscale temperature from models like PRIMS, P-R-I-S-M, could be different from temperatures measured in the field. In this project, we approach the idea to analyze this hypothesis which is again, if these models represent the precise temperatures that pikas are experiencing on the territories. So what I did, uh, we split this project in two parts. Next slide, please. So I split this uh, project in two parts. Um, in the part one, if you see the graph on the left, what we did, it was determine the variation in temperatures recorded by sensors in the field. There were 19 um, sensors that they were deployed in a single point near the study site from November 2020 to June 2021. Data from these 19 sensors were analyzed to obtain the standard error of monthly mean, minimum, and maximum temperatures measured inside. And part two, uh, right um, graph, was to, um, was to compare the field data on ambient temperature at the PICA study on the Niagara Ridge that were collected by several U and H series hubble deployed in sequence during 2015 and 2019. These field data were compared with the Prince uh, Green Monday climate data at 800 meters resolution downscaling from style point. Next slide, please. So this is the analog process. First, and the, we mentioned the error field sensors, um, which is the 19 sensors that we were talking about, calculating the 95% confidence interval, monthly average, minimum and maximum temperature. And then we use a uh, parity test um, to determine whether standard error different between monthly average, minimum and maximum temperatures. Next slide. So the results for part one was that uh, all field sensors measure agree between one half of the degree, which is great. Saying these sensors are, well, some of these sensors are 20 years old and they're still measuring the data accurate. And that was great. The errors of the field sensor temperatures were not related to the absolute temperature in our test. So then after this, we can move to the next part. Next slide, thank you. Um, and the part two, we obtained downscale temperature data for a specific location where ambient temperature had been measured for several um, years during the PICA study. Obtaining the mean and the standard error of monthly average minimum 
and maximum temperature from fuel sensor deployed in a sequence um, at the specific location. So if you see on the on the graph here, um, there is a, the average, the maximum, and minimum, and only the average was um, well, no, not even that much, but like only sixteen percent was accurate with the with the um, with the downscale data and the sensor data. Next slide. And using the appropriate standard errors values on the monthly average minimum and maximum temperature measure in the field, we determine that whether each downscale temperature static fell between the 95% confidence interval of the corresponding field temperature statics. So if you see the three graphs, we have three. We have the average, the minimum, and the maximum temperature. The blue one is the field temperature that we measure with our sensors, and the um, orange one is the downscale model that it should follow, right? But the only one that we can see here is the average is kind of accurate. And the problem is that the minimum and the maximum are not. If you see closely, there are some points that there is 10 to 12 degrees um, difference. And this is a problem for PICAS. Um, next slide, please. Because downscale moldy, um, Molly minimum and maximum temperature almost never fell within the 95 confidence interval of the field data. And the minimum and maximum were not far less extreme than values measured in the field. Meaning that like for PICAS, this is super bad. So just think about as a research, we're trying to, to think about the, how their, their, their survival and demographics, but if our data is not accurate, how can we explore this? And, and have the right um, the right data. Next slide. Um, our results show that the downscale model failed to predict the inside temperature on the rocky uh, slope habitat by PICAS. And it is important to measure the environmental variables experienced by this PICAS or any, or any organisms because they will interfere with their demographics and survival. Um, next slide. And I just wanna thank um, Dr. Ray and Ari because they were the most wonderful people ever to work with. Um, th thank you to uh, Dr. Chris, because um, she not only gave me the data and the scientific knowledge, but she was such an amazing and kind human. And I had to be honest, I didn't even know what was a PICA. <laughs> I, I didn't even know many terms of, in the beginning of this riches. And I think I asked her no one, but many, many times, and she was just so patient with me. Um, to Ari, thank you, because she, um, she was there before our internship star and she was always explaining everything as well. And it was great to uh, give me the opportunity to hike with her, to observe this PICAS, to hold this PICAS. And thank you because you really um, are a remarkable person. And thanks to the Rex um, team, Beck, Alicia, Dana, Jeff, Annie, like you guys are amazing. And thanks to the Rex program because um, they really give a really good opportunity to understand what's the research. And next slide. So um, I'm open for any questions if you guys have anything or, or yeah, thank you. All right, great job, Crystal. Uh, I have a question here for you. Does the model show that max and minimum temperatures are fluctuating at higher levels than when it was developed? So, the, so the data, so this is the thing. So we only uh, collect one year data just because the amount of time that we have. And honestly, it's, it's just like, maybe it's the, the model that we use that they're not accurate because there is many, but um, the problem is like these models in many papers that I, I read about research done in these um, models are, they're not accurate, so yeah. Okay, um, and Chris says, thanks for your help in pushing this project forward. Would you like to describe what we are doing to collect correct data instead of using downscale data? Yes, so um, the PICA team pretty much has sensors uh, on the tile, under the tile, because so PICAs um, leave pretty much, they go under the tile. So like in the ground, if we're in the ground, um, PICAs go one to three meters down the ground. So they have sensors down in the ground. We all, um, they also have sensors on the trees to measure the difference temperatures. Um, when we go to the field, um, we go and observe PICAs for survival and demographics. 
we call, uh, we also trap pikas to tag them and go the next year and see if the um, they're they're in the field. Yes. Okay. All right. Great job. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and move us on to the next presenter, but there is one more question in the chat. Um, so I'll ask you to answer. Actually, there's two more questions down the chat. <laughs> I'll ask you to answer in the chat um, as we move on to this next presenter.